In this video, we'll talk about how we can represent phylogenetic trees in what is called NUIC notation. This is a way of writing out phylogenetic trees just using letters and punctuation. It allows for a very compact notation. It's actually used by computers and computer programmers. It's also useful to help uh, indicate phylogenetic structure, clade structure, it could be understanding new notation, usually will improve your general understanding of how phylogenetic trees works. So we will use primates, we will use apes in particular as a case study here. So phylogenetic trees represent hierarchical relationships, they represent nested hierarchical relationships in particular. And they can take a fair bit of space to draw out, particularly when you add nice pretty pictures of all the organisms like I have here. So Newick notation is a way of representing them in a more compact structure. In this particular tree we've got a clade here of the genus Pan, and then we have other nested other groups that Pan and the genus nest are nested in. So the genus Pan is nested within African apes. African apes include gorillas, they are nested and humans, they are nested within the great apes. The great apes were are nested within apes. Apes is nested within primates. Primates are mammals. Mammals are eukaryotes and so forth. We can continue to represent these hierarchical relationships. We can use circle diagrams also to represent how each all of these groups represent. But this again takes a fair bit of space to draw out. So we'll use Newick notation as a way of making this information more compact. We'll start off with a fairly Small example, we'll just use humans, chimps, we'll ignore bonobos, and gorillas. So first I'll walk through this circle diagram just for these three species. So Homo sapiens and Pan, we could each draw a circle around them, they are species. This implies that all the populations of Homo sapiens, all the populations of Pan are occurring within this circle. We can draw a circle around both these species to indicate that they are part of a clade. They share a recent common ancestor. And then gorillas are another species that occur at another layer out, and we could draw a circle around gorilla, homo, and pan to indicate that they are all part of a clade. Now we can represent this more compactly using Newick notation. So I have homo and pan here again in circles. I'll just write them out in words. Now I can indicate that they are part of a clade by drawing parentheses around them. So new, new notation uses the names of species and parentheses and things surrounded by parentheses occur within the same clade. So I can then add gorilla outside and then surround gorilla, homo, and pan by parentheses to indicate that these three species occur within a clade. So Homo and Pan are within a clade, and then Gorilla is within a larger clade that has all three species. You can finish this off by adding some commas, which are just used for indicating space. And now I have summarized this tree and this circle diagram using Newick notation, with parentheses indicating each clade. So there it is in slightly larger, homo and pan surrounded by parentheses, a comma, this comma here is indicating this branch here, and then gorillas occur over there. Newick notation can be used to represent any tree. So chimps and bonobos, I can represent the fact that they are in a clade, write out their names, put a comma between and surround them by parentheses. I can add humans next to them, put a comma there, write humans, and then surround them by parentheses. So that clade there is surrounded by the parentheses. Gorillas are the next one out. I put a comma there. I add gorillas, indicating they're at the next level out, surrounded by parentheses. And then orangutans, comma. The parentheses start to add up on the ends, 
I won't be too picky about these when it comes to grading and whatnot. What most important is indicating the proper clave structure. And then we get Gibbons as the final layer. So we have a single clade here in a single set of sister species, and then we're adding additional species that are more distantly related with each step. Again, new notation can represent any tree. So here I have added Homo erectus as the extinct sister species of Homo sapiens. Sister species, sister taxa is always a relative term without Homo erectus here. Pan would be the sister group to Homo sapiens. But here we have Homo sapiens, Homo erectus as our as sister species, and then Pan troglodytes, Pan pamiscus, the chimpanzees and bonobos. And we have two clades here. We have a, a clade of Pan and we have a clade of Homo. So if I wanted to write this out in Newark notation, I would start off by writing Homo sapiens or, and Homo erectus, putting them next to each other. Pan troglodytes and Pan paniscus, they go next together. I indicate that Homo erectus and Homo sapiens are clade by surrounding them in parentheses here. And then I put pan, uh, indicate that Pan troglodytes, Pan paniscus are a clade, separate clade by putting parentheses here. So it's important to note this clade here, clade one, Homo sapiens and Homo erectus surrounded by parentheses. This clade here, Pan troglodytes, Pan paniscus, separate clade, clade two, also surrounded by parentheses. Then I can finish this off by adding parentheses around it, indicating that they are all part of a larger clade. They are all related to each other. Finish it off with a little comma here in the middle. So two sets of sister species, Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, troglodytes and pan, and then surrounded by parentheses because they are part of a larger clade. So here's a little challenge. You can stop the video to think about this. What is the new notation for the genus Hongo? Stop the, stop the video and think about that. Seriously, stop the video, think about it, challenge yourself. So the Bornean and Sumatran orangutans are part of a clade. So I can write them down next to each other, surround them by parentheses. And then the Tapanuli, which is a relatively recently recognized, it's split off from a different, from one of the other genera. The Tapanuli comma goes there and they are written on the outside. And then we finish it off with the parentheses. So the Bornean and Sumatran are a clade, they are sister species, and close them within parentheses, and then add the tapanuli there. Here is a, another phylogenetic tree. We've got gorillas here. There are as a similar, there is a structure here where gorilla, gorilla delii and gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. Never get tired of saying gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. These two are sister subspecies. And here we have two other sister subspecies. So we have kind of this evenly branched structure down here. We'll ignore Homo sapiens in Japan. We'll just focus on the gorillas. We have this kind of symmetrical branching tree, two subspecies on each side of the tree. To summarize this, we'll call, we'll just use their initials because the name gets long. GGD is Gorilla Gorilla Delii. GGG is Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla. We'll ignore these other names here, which indicate genetic and geographic information. So GGD, GGG, and so forth. We can start off by indicating this clade here, GGD, GGG. Write them together. Now think for a second, what, what's the next step here? How do we represent this clade? Stop the video if you need to, to think about it. So we write them as a, in parentheses, as a clade, GGB and GBB, write them together, surround them by parentheses, and then we indicate that they're all grouped together here by surrounding the whole thing in parentheses.